A lot of students are asking me what are reusable components, how to know that we need to make something reusable, and is it really a good idea to always try to implement reusable components inside your frontend framework? The first and really important point is to think about your components as reusable functions, because to the functions we can apply exactly the same stuff. So just imagine that we implement some feature and it looks really big. At least your file is huge and it is maybe like 200 lines or more. At this moment you typically think, ok, I must split it in several components. Then you have a question, first of all, do you really need to do that? Is it really shareable and where should you put it at all? And the third question, how to reuse it and how to make it reusable? So the first question is, do we need to make it reusable at all? Maybe not. But your component is big and it is difficult to read for you. What you can do? You can move this code out and simply split to two different components. Just imagine that we implement the feature which is called register page. This is why we have a folder register. And inside there we have a folder with our components. And for example, inside you are implementing main component, where you render everything which is related to your register page. Just imagine that this main is 200 lines and you really want to split it. Then you can simply take some part and move out. You don't make it shareable, you simply move it out and you put it near. For example, here we have main GS6. Then here we will create form GS6. And form is exactly what we want to move out of the main. We don't really try to make it reusable across our application, we simply move it out as easy as possible. And as you can see here, I wrote GS6 examples like we are talking about React, but all these rules can also be applied to Vue, Angular or any other framework. So the main idea is not to make something reusable, but just to split your huge component, which makes it easier to support. The main idea is that all these components are still lying inside register folder. They are completely isolated inside our register feature and they are not reusable. This is why you should not think a lot about how to move them out. At some point later you might implement login page. And you have also here components where you implement your main GS6 form and you see, ok, but my component is really big, I want to move this form out. And you are moving this form in form GS6 file and it is still lying here inside login. This is totally fine, your code is easier to support. At that specific moment you might think, ok, but I have exactly the same forms or similar between two different folders, between login and register. Maybe I can share form between them. Is it a good idea? It depends. From my experience I can say that in a lot of cases it is much easier to copy paste code than to share it, because then it is easier to change and it is faster to ship. If you try to make something shareable, which is not really shareable, you always have problems that you are writing if conditions inside and you are checking if we are inside registration, then I am doing this, and if I am inside login, I am doing that. This is a bad approach, this is the bad sign inside your shareable component. Your shareable component should never have some cases with specific implementations. It should be really configurable. Which actually means for our case here, we want to create a shared folder, inside we are creating our components, and now inside we are moving our form.js6 and we are removing it from login and from register, because now we are using it from our shared. Most importantly, it must be configurable and it does not have any logic which is related to either login or register separately. This is just some logic to implement a form. Now I want to show you some real examples of shareable components so you understand better when they are really shareable. I am sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have lots of advanced courses on different web technologies where we create real applications and prepare for the interviews. You can find the link in the description box below. And here I have my project from the Angular course. And here inside source app I have a shared folder and inside components we have lots of different components. Here we have Angular components but it doesn't really matter, we have the same rules like we already discussed. First of all let's look on something simple. We have here loading component and as you can see this is just one file where inside we have a template loading. So this is an easiest example of the shareable component. 
This is just a component without any business logic at all, where inside we are rendering some markup. At maximum, we can provide some properties to configure this markup. For example, here inside error message component, we have a simple markup, but we are providing an error message from the outside. This is the shareable component that we can reuse in a lot of places, because it just renders the error message. The same with this loading, we have loading indicator in a lot of places of our application, and we don't want to copy-paste the same markup. The second example of reusable component is something that you want to share, and it has some business logic inside. For example, pagination can be reused for different pages. Let's say you are rendering the list of users and on the other page the list of articles. In both of them you will have pagination and it makes a lot of sense to make it completely configurable and move outside. This is why inside our pagination we have some pagination markup which just renders the list of the pages and inside our component we are configuring it and we have some business logic how it is implemented. Here we are checking the pages count, we are building an array of pages and we are rendering our component. Again, this component is completely shareable. And the first type of components that you can reuse are actually features, which actually means it is not only markup inside and not business logic additionally, but also fetching or maybe even state from your state management tool. Here such example would be popular tags. This is exactly the component where we are rendering our popular tags with errors and the list of popular tags. We are fetching them inside our component. So this component is completely isolated and it fetches everything what it needs by itself. And additionally to that we have a service which talks to API and we have the whole store which implements and saves everything what is needed inside our state. This is the full-blown feature, which is shareable, we can put it at any place of our application, and it will render for us the block of popular tags. And the last thing that I want to show you is an article form. It is extremely similar to what we talked about here, where we share our form between register and login. Here I have an article form, which I am sharing between creating of the article and editing of the article. And here this form is completely configurable, because we are providing inside initial values for the whole form, is submitting property to show the spinner and some backend errors. And this form is completely stateless, it doesn't fetch anything, it doesn't work with API, we simply provide something from the outside, we are changing this form and we are throwing this data outside. This is exactly how I would implement such form for login and register if I want to share it between them. And the most important point to remember, it is much more difficult to make something shareable and reusable. This is why copy-paste for the win in a lot of cases. And actually, if you're interested to know what is ECMAScript 6 map inside Angular and how it differs from the plain object, make sure to check this video also.